What is a nomad? What's a nomad? What is a nomad? Are they homeless? Are they van dwellers down by the river? Well, I want to discuss this. Now, I know I've discussed this in the past, but I want to revisit it because I have a comment. It's almost, it's a long letter that somebody was confused. I think it's a new subscriber because of the video 25 years alone. It kind of blew up. Who knew? Who knew that that was one that was going to blow up? They must have liked the title and they decided to watch it. So I have a lot of you are new subscribers. You came to me and the subscribe because you loved that video. But a lot of you, I sense because of your comments that you're asking me a lot of questions about this lifestyle that I lead living in my minivan. So I'm gonna discuss this. Now, I did make you not coffee, no, but I made you tea. A Bigelow lemon lift, let's get a lemon lift. Sounds pretty good. I do have my lemon. I've been using this. I bought this in my Walmart, my last Walmart shopping haul. And oh my gosh, it's so lemony. They're um uh they're wax, you know, scented wax. But if I just lift this off, it smells good. So I'm gonna keep this over here and not only get an aroma of lemon, but Let's have lemon lift tea. Let's have afternoon tea. It's kind of late in the afternoon today for me. Let's get this out here. Look at all those little orange, yellow balls. Woo, yellow balls. I've heard of blue balls, but not yellow balls. What would yellow balls mean, guys? I don't know. <laughs> I know, we're all adults, right? Okay, cheers. This is really good. Do you like it? Well, I've discussed this um, nomad business before. Well, the, it's funny too, cause some of, um, a lot of it's coming from the guys who uh, watched that 25 years alone video. I, I keep getting new comments. It's just, people are still watching it. And one of them just said, that is so sad. Where's the American dream? You've been alone and you were forced into living in a van. Uh, no. <laughs> no, I wasn't. Me, personally, I was not forced into living in a minivan. I researched this lifestyle extensively for like three years prior to um, leaving my bricks and sticks home. But this is, I knew this is what I wanted to do. I, this is what I wanted to do. Um, and when the um, occasion uh, presented itself, I thought, this is it. I'm going to now, I, I was a renter and I just put in my notice. I was out of my home within a month. And I've told this story many times. I'll be brief on it because um, I know my faithful subscribers, you have, well, you're all faithful. But some of you have been following me from the very beginning, uh, three years ago. So, and it's been almost three years exactly, exactly since I have had my YouTube channel going. So you can go down, go down deep into my, into my videos. I've got almost 600 of them and you can see almost a change in, in my appearance in three years. Um, personally, I think I keep looking younger. <laughs> I do. It's kind of funny. I don't know how that's happening, but yeah, let me bring this camera down just a little bit. I like to keep it real, everybody. I know I seem fidgety. Okay. Well, let me just set this up too. I want to uh, share this with you. Uh, yesterday, Paul and I, we shared a hotel room. We got a hotel room. I wanted to wash off quartzite. I wanted to get my hair washed and just relax. And I, I did some uh, work on my laptop, which I don't always get a chance to do. And oh, no hanky panky, uh, I promise. <laughs> we just shared a room. And I took like three baths. It was, it was uh, delicious. And I got a shower and um, Paul got a shower. We got him all trimmed up, but now he's, uh, he has a cold right now. So we all can um, maybe give him some well wishes in comments. Paul, he just, it just cropped up. He has a cold. And, uh, yeah, poor, 
Yeah, I won't say poor Paul because he's not poor. <laughs> well, we're going to pray for him. Yeah, pray, get, say prayer for Paul that he gets over this um, cold very quickly. Usually, I'm the one that gets sick when I get back from courtside. So we stayed in a hotel room. It was a lot of fun. And I'm just... I'm, it's cold outside. That's why I'm recording in my studio again. I know you like to see other things, but you know, I always mention a lot of YouTubers, they, um, other, you know, all kinds of YouTube channels, all kinds of subjects and genres. Yeah. Well, the bulk of them, um, do filming and they record their videos in a studio, which is uh, an extra bedroom. <laughs> so, or they might sit in the living room. Well, this is my home. Okay. This is my studio. I'm, if I live in a van down by the river, this is my van, right? I think it's appropriate that I do a lot of my videos here so that I can concentrate on talking to you and getting information to you and just you know, having a relationship with you without worrying about, is the lighting okay? Oh, here comes the wind. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it's cold or it's too hot and I'm sweating. So this is my studio. Okay, let me read the letter that I received. Okay. Let me get this on here. This one was, let me, <laughs> the, I got some good ones today. Here's one. Hey, Lee, I was just thinking that you could order some washable, washable paper towels for drying your dishes and things and just throw them in your wash when you do laundry and not go through so much paper waste. I don't go through paper waste. Oh, my gosh. I would think that when you live in a house, there's where your paper waste is, and I know. Um, I, <laughs> I've seen my kids, they're garbage. They have big, uh, they dump a whole big thing of garbage every day. The, the van life is very sustainable. I use just a little bit of paper towels. I don't do a lot of cooking, but you do in a house, but you have a sink. The other problem, no, so I don't waste a lot of paper. Oh my gosh. That's, that would be, that's a falsity. And, and there's no way that you can know that. I mean, you, you don't know. But um, you see me using a lot of paper towels because I'm cleaning dishes. But let me just tell you, I don't cook a lot. I do my produce. I cut apples. I eat very, very simple. Cucumbers, apples, avocados. Sometimes I make a salad, but there are times where I just slice an apple and a cucumber and I dip it in ranch dressing. Yeah. And then I take a paper towel and I wipe out the the dish from the ranch dressing really seriously yeah i do not and we're very sustainable on water we're not flushing toilets we're not when you flush a toilet you're talking about two to five gallons of water being flushed we don't do that i use a gallon of water a day i drink excuse me i drink um water and I wash up with it. That's it. <laughs> no, I don't waste water. We're so sustainable. But another thing too with those disposable paper towels, I don't want that kind of thing in my laundry. I mean, my laundry's right here by my head in in this area. And I don't want to have a special laundry for, no. That, but it was a good suggestion. Thank you. But no. Okay. Where is that one? Huh. Let me find it. <laughs> okay, here it is. This is from Connie. Hi, Connie. Thank you for this. It really did make me think. And I think that you're probably somebody who just recently found my channel through 25 Years Alone video. And you subscribed and now you're watching my videos. I think there's a whole whole slew of you out there, my new friends who are watching me and know nothing about this lifestyle. But I will mention there are hundreds and hundreds of thousands of us out here. It's been going on for a while and it just keeps increasing. I left my home 
on purpose and let me tell you how much rent I was paying and I gave it up because I wanted this so bad. I was paying, it was almost like rent control. It was a historical house, but my, the owners of it didn't really want to do a lot um, of renovation on it. They're, so a lot of it, because I worked in the trades before, not, um, <laughs> we're talking construction trades, like men working, not one time somebody said, do you, were you a prostitute? You said you worked in the trades. No, <laughs> no, I've never been a prostitute, right? No, I'm just, I'm a, I'm, I'm, I was brought up well and a mother of four, but we will talk about that again. Shame on you. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, but I did work in the trades, the construction trades. And so I did a lot to that house. I always kept the painting up and my son's a carpenter. And if we needed a door or, and you know, put a new door on or fix, fix anything, we did it ourselves. So I was only paying, get this, a month for the past 15 years I lived there, $450. Oh my gosh. Yes. Had a big backyard, wasn't landscaped or anything, and had a front yard, had a nice front porch. You know, you can go out during the monsoon time and sit there and watch these storms come in. Oh my gosh. It was a wonderful home. And I lived there for 15 years, but I gave it up for this life. So as some of you thought, well, 25 years, and I've mentioned this, so I'll just one more time. Um, I'm 70 years old now. Well, a couple months shy. And so the 25 years was, yeah, I'm not alone anymore because I'm, I um, have a relationship with Paul and we travel together. So it's, um, some of you didn't watch the whole video, so you got the wrong impression, but I do get these, I do get these, um, comments that say, oh, that's sad. You're living in your van because you're alone. One has nothing to do with the other. I wanted to live in my, get my van going because I wanted to be able to travel from Ohio where my daughter moved and my grandkids and then go back and forth Arizona on Ohio. So, and it was time. The man upstairs said, let's go. Your dream is about to come true. And I am having the time of my life. I have friends galore and we text it. I am not alone. <laughs> I am not alone. I have great friends out there that I can text and we have conversations or I can say, where are you? And we go meet. So this is a, this is a whole movement going on. So am I a nomad or am I homeless? Let's see what Connie has to say. I know this, I know this might sound like a weird question. Never. But I'm curious as to what the difference is between nomad life opposed to someone that is homeless and has to live out of their vehicle. I understand that if someone's homeless and has to live out of the vehicle, it's most likely not by choice. And if you choose the nomad life, that's your decision that you choose to do. Well, there's the difference right there, right? But I'm going to discuss that because there's another there's another slice of this. There's another slice. And I'll get into that. Just trying to figure out what the difference is. Because you're probably just being introduced to this lifestyle. As far as day-to-day -day life goes, this is interesting. Good question, Connie. Eating, cooking, storage, bathing, sleeping, where you can park to sleep, where you shouldn't park. All these different things to look out for. Actually, what happened and got me to thinking about the two comparisons in that is that I went to Google, on Google and I entered living in a minivan just to get more information. I was seriously thinking about the nomad life. Then I checked out Wikipedia. Well, you know, really? Okay, I don't know. I'll have to check it out myself. And it brought up this whole list and information of what to do when you have to live in your vehicle. And it didn't sound very fun or exciting. Oh my gosh. It's exciting. 
it's exciting out here. And I'm not, I'm not just kidding. I mean, not every day, but it is exciting. You ask any regular nomad out here and it's exciting. And I've had, I'm going to talk about this other category. Okay. And it didn't sound very fun. Like I had in my mind that it would be. And so that got me wondering, what is the difference? What would you say that brings a joy to a nomad? Is it different because you have the money to travel? Is it like every day you wake up and are excited about where your next journey will take you? Um, or do you ever think I'm actually living in my vehicle and get bummed out about it? Like I'm going to have to find some place to park. I need to find some place where I can take a shower, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I got to be careful where I am at night. I'm certainly I'm uncertain about my life. Just all of it, okay? I really thought that living the nomad life would be something I would want to do. But then when I read that article about what it's really like when you have to live in your car, it doesn't sound as exciting and feeling exciting and feeling free. Sorry for this long message as it, as at it, if you can provide any insight, I would greatly appreciate it. I'm here to add insight. Do I wake up excited every morning? Well, I don't know about excited, but I certainly wake up happy every morning. Oh my gosh, yes, I, well, yeah, I kinda do. As far as parking at night, if you ask any nomad, a regular nomad um, who planned this out, like you said, maybe the difference is the nomad planned it out, but the homeless didn't. And they're really um, not prepared for all of this. That is a big difference. That's, a, that's one of the main differences, yes. Well, along with that goes money, money. You need money to have fun in this lifestyle. But you can also live in your van, in your vehicle, and work. Let me tell you a story that when I, you know, this was way before I even saw anything on YouTube about this. There was an article in Tucson. Of course, U of A is here. So this is a big college town. U of A is a major college in the United States. It's my alma mater. I have my degree here in um, the um, University of Arizona. Go Wildcats, yeah. So the article was there was this a male student. What he did was he bought a van, like a, a, like a, a work van. And he bought himself a parking spot at the U of A. They can run expensive per, see, per semester. Well, he did that instead of buying rent he bought himself a parking spot and he stayed there all the time. He lived in his van. He was very stealthy. He didn't let anybody know till after he graduated. This guy graduated without any student debt. He stayed in his van and he studied. He ate in his van. He um, didn't party and he graduated. And then he told the world what he did. That's the first I thought. That's brilliant. Utterly brilliant. Now, we know Chris Farley in Saturday Night Live, you know, you, you know, living in a van down by the river. Well, let me tell you what's going on with living in a van down by the river now. That's prime real estate for nomads. They're trying to get to be down by the river because they like the water. There are so many of us. It's crazy how many of us are out there. I have a Facebook group. It's called Minivan Lee's This Nomad Life. And a lot of bricks and sticks people, they live in houses. They're, they love this um, uh, lifestyle, but there are so many of us that just, we, we live in our vehicles. We have vans. We have uh, Promaster high tops. Have you probably seen Paul's um, Promaster? It's like a, it's like one of those um, vehicles that, they're the shape of like the Amazon delivery, you know, package thing. Only they're white. And it's, we, everything we own, everything I own is in my van. 
Do you know how fun that is? I'm looking out my window right now. What do I see? What do we see here? Um, let's see. What do we see? Well, I'm under a solar panel at a park. And I see that out here. But I mean, it ain't that exciting of a view. But what I'm liking out here is I can see a street. It's very quiet here. I know Tucson. I'm in Tucson. I know it very well. I've lived here 40 years. But I see palm trees and I see trees and and um, desert plants. I look out my window here and I see Paul's ProMaster, white ProMaster um, vehicle. I'm very happy, but if I get tired of this or I don't like the view or it's noisy or I just want to do something different, I want to go somewhere, I get to literally hop in the front seat, my driver's seat, and I get to drive where um, I want to go. And everything I own goes with me. I don't have to like, oh, I'm going to go somewhere and then I got to get back home. I'm always home. I don't, it, you could probably only understand it if you live it, but it's pretty darn cool. Is every day peaches and cream? I mean, kind of. I mean, doesn't it sound like utopia? It's not utopia. I've gotten sick in my van before, yeah, and that's not fun, but you know, I dealt with it just like anybody would living in a house. Am I comfortable sleeping? I sleep actually better. I, I kept, last night at the hotel, I kept waking up. Um, I just did, and of course, I'm sleeping next to Paul, which I'd never do unless there we share a hotel room, and um, that's weird, you know, to have somebody, if he moves, then we all move, you know, so yeah. Um, it can be different. So, but I love sleeping in my, sleeping in my home. This, every, I know it's hard to explain, but yeah, living down by the river, sure. People want that river. <laughs> they want that water. But we have friends. It's a, a, just a whole community out here. Well, now let's go to another, let's go to the other aspect of this, right? The homeless. It's just some comparison. There are a lot of homeless people out here that have been forced out of their homes. They have no money, but they had a vehicle, so they had to throw everything in it and live in it. I've seen some really messy vehicles. They just threw everything in it. I don't even know how. Yeah, it's a mess. It almost looks like a rat's nest. I've seen them. I've seen a lot of them, and people are being forced into their vehicles. I did it. A nomad did it on purpose. We have a little bit more money. We plan for it. But, you know, I don't get that much Social Security. Um, so, basically, I took off without a lot of money. I did have a good savings because I worked previously. Um, obviously. <laughs> um, and I was always very frugal and I saved money. But, yeah, it's like... So, I had a good savings behind me. And then I worked as I traveled. The first couple of years, I worked at Amazon. You can work at, I worked around the country, work in different Amazon uh, warehouses. There are people like the, with the student, there are people who work, that live in their vans. They had the money. Let's talk California. California is so expensive. There are professional, young professionals that are living in their vans. They've got nice ones. It's all built out for them. Nice closets where they hang their professional clothes. They go, they get up, they drive to work. And when work is over, they drive back and to and find a place to park, do it again the next day. But they have like, like working at Google, working at Facebook, working at their, their coders. They, they, they write code. They, they're attorneys. I mean, what was that one the attorney, the Lincoln, the Lincoln lawyer, the Lincoln, didn't he live in his, in his Lincoln? This is not anything new. This is not a new system. But there are a lot of homeless that are being forced into their vehicles and they're living in junk. They don't have money. They don't have money for gas. What else they got to do is go get a job. I mean, really, seriously. They have to go get a job unless they don't have the proper um, papers. A lot of homeless, homeless people don't have any documentation. They don't have their birth certificates. They lost all that stuff and they can't really like get jobs. 
what I want to talk about, there's another category, that love that I told you about. There's another slice of this. So it can't just be lack of money or it can't just be money or to, to be homeless. Okay. There are a growing number of seniors that have money. They got social security coming in. Maybe not a lot, but you know, they, that's what they have. They have some social security coming in, but maybe their house or their apartment building got sold. And what they're doing all across the country is they're tearing down some of these older apartment buildings and building them up and then renting to young high professionals. And so they're like, they're being forced out of their home. They're not destitute at all. Now they say, well, I've seen this on YouTube. I think instead of going in the, cause I can't really find another place that I can afford. And do I even want to afford it? I'm spending the bulk of my money, you know, on rent. That's what they're thinking. So they get themselves or they already have maybe a minivan and they move into it. Now, are they homeless? Because they were kind of forced out of their home in a way. They just chose not to um, relook. I mean, there are so many stories out there. I would say, no, they're not homeless. Am I homeless? Not really, but you know what? I will say if somebody said I was homeless, I'm not offended by that. I've talked to a lot of homeless people. Tucson is like homeless central. Um, they're homeless on foot and I have no problem with the homeless. I don't want to be around schizophrenics. Sometimes they're homeless because they do have mental issues. There's a lot of them that don't. I mean, you can drive around parks here and they're all gathered. They have some tents going up. They're gathered and, and, uh, they don't have a vehicle, but, um, they're just gathered around. They talk and. Yeah, it's an, it, we're seeing a new world, aren't we? We just are. So I, there were some other aspects. Let me continue on with this. She said, "What? okay, the difference. Does it bring joy? And am I excited about my journey? Yeah, I am. And I was solo for uh, three and a half years before I met uh, Paul. I was solo. I was always excited. I knew I had friends that I could contact. I could say, where are you? And I could go where I wanted to go. Okay. Now, or am I, is it a bummer that am I bummed out because I have to find a place to park or find a place to get a shower? I can join Planet Fitness and go take a shower almost in any city. Yeah. And if you go to any pilot truck stop, there's showers. I can go take a shower, but I also have videos that show how I wash my hair in my van. And I wash up every day, every or every night before I go to bed, I wash my whole body. There are some nomads that haven't had a shower in 10 years. Do they smell? Absolutely not. Because they know how to wash up. We're very, we're very uh, sustainable on the water issue. Yeah. And I've got videos on that. And maybe I'll just have to revisit some of those subjects. How I wash up. Using a collapsible bucket. All that stuff. This is a very organized life. Where do I park? Oh my gosh, I've got videos and videos and videos about parking. If I'm in a city, I go to a park during the day. Or the library. Or I go to a restaurant and sit and drink coffee. Or I go shopping. Or mostly I'm at a park. And um, at night, I have places to park. There's all kinds of places to park. I just did a video recently on finding the right, I was showing people how to find a place to park in um, residential areas, what to look for. Yeah, it's not against the law to park on the street. No, we're not, we're not, um, we're not, you know, we're taxpayers too. Every time we buy gasoline, we're paying for the roads. You know, I mean, I don't own the road and neither do homeowners. I mean, unless there's a sign, you can park on the street. And I'm just going to say that. And some people say no. But are we squatting? No, we're not squatting. We're just, we're just there for the night. We're quiet and we, we come late and we leave early. You know, 
don't worry about it okay and then um be careful at night okay i mean that's a given but i find there's a lot more windows and doors to break into in a home than there are in my vehicle and if there's something going down i can hop in my seat and take off so yeah i would probably was more nervous living in my house i was alone living in a house um in tucson so yeah let's see what else um you said that because you read that Wikipedia, Wikipedia, um, that you wouldn't want to do this lifestyle. It's not for everybody. It's not. But most of us are having the time of our life. And I, but the homeless who were forced out and had to go live in their vehicle because they didn't have enough money or they couldn't find something to rent afterwards and they just don't have the, the extra money to make it a good organized system. Yeah, I do feel bad for them because I see, well, Paul and I see them everywhere. And I know a lot of nomads do if they're when they're in the city. Yeah. I see them at the parks. And sometimes I have gas because they don't even have window coverings. I mean, we have, I have window coverings. One of you asked me to show you how I got these curtains um, to, and how I roll them up. I will do that in an upcoming video, but well, I hope this answers your question. I think there's two things that separate the homeless with the van dweller. Living in a van down by the river, a nomad, a, somebody who's a, a, whatever you want to call us. We're not hobos. That's a whole nother thing. We're not um, gypsies. I'm not a gypsy. I'm that's not me because a lot of times they say um on the journey a lot of times i'm in a city for months at a time i mean i just am and i go when i want to go um i might go visit another town around but i'm i don't always drive as you who have followed me a long time you know that <laughs> um i'm about to take a trip now for a little while and then in the summer, I certainly will get out of the southwest area because it's going to be like 110 degrees. But I don't normally just travel all over the place. I, I really don't like it. I'm getting kind of tired of driving all the time. Well, that would be one thing that, yeah. Um, I don't want to travel all the time. Um, just sitting in my seat, I'm my back, my my rear, and then my legs. This position, I, I don't do so well with. But so the two differences between homeless and nomads are money, money, and did they plan it out properly? Do they have all the things that they need? Like a power bank. I have power stations. I have solar. I have all the gadgets I need. And I thought this out. I have my stove. It's things like that. So I think that would be the difference. Well, um... I think that answered your question, Connie. It's a fun life. If, you know, what I always suggest is if you are thinking about it, try it out. That's what we had the meetup for in Quartzsite. Try it out. Come to the meetup, meet some people and get some ideas and see if you like traveling like that. Okay, <laughs> so that's it. Nomad versus homeless. You can call me homeless, I don't care. It doesn't, it doesn't hurt my feelings. I mean, I mom off for the homeless community. You know, some of them just didn't have good, good planning or good luck or good upbringing. That's what was dealt to them. And that's um, where their mindset is. It's really up here, isn't it? I mean, it's really everything is up here, right? Okay, so please subscribe and give me a thumbs up. I really, really appreciate it. And go to minivanlee.com. Net gaiters. These are the best net gaiters in the world. They look cool. Are they not cool? I've got different flavors. Yes. And I've got my big, I've got my big sunglasses. Um, still selling those. I've got Shemogs. You can see what those are. And I've got my exercise tapes. If you want the book, How to Live in a Minivan, The Minivan Leeway, well, it's on Amazon. Just type in Minivan Lee. It'll get you from thinking about it to living it with list everything you need to get you from just mm, I think I might want to be live in my vehicle and go travel the, and see the country to actually doing it I've got 
from A to Z all the way through. So thanks for spending the afternoon with me. It was good tea. I'm really enjoying this. Love you guys. Bye. See you tomorrow.